Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. Oh, hi. We're live, meaning anything could happen. You never know what we're going to say next, so you better stick around and stay tuned. For the next hour, we're going to be answering as many of your questions as we can about health, nutrition, diet, medications, uh, no politics, or what else? That's pretty much it. Yeah. Everything else goes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So try to type a succinct yet uh, complete question into the comments, and we will try to answer your question. Any yeah. updates you need to make, young lady? Um, no, I don't think so. We're getting excited for the low-carb cruise coming yes. up in just a few weeks. We're going to see a lot of you on there. If you're going to be on the cruise... Say hi in the comments. Absolutely. And then after that, Orlando. And then Poland. we got a lot going on. I know. On. I, know. I just want to stay home with my sheep, but no. Oh, yeah. He, he really hates to get out and travel. Let me just tell you guys. All right. We've got a question here from JD. JD says that he's 79-year-old male, 95% carnivore, lost 50 pounds since October of last year. His A1C... Went from 6.9 down to 5.3. His question is, does he still need metformin? His doc says he can quit it, but the type 2 diabetes might come back. JD, if you continue to eat 95% carnivore, the type 2 diabetes will never come back. Okay. What made you have it to start with was eating too many carbohydrates. And what will make it come back is if the carbohydrates creep, creep back into your diet. And if you keep those out of the diet, you can stop the metformin. This is a little star up here. I don't know. What's I like do? it, though. I like it. Adam, keto since mid-February, last three weeks, carnivore. Triglycerides before keto were 3.13, now 4.58. Please explain signs behind triglycerides, even if not perfect carnivore carbs are way lower than with my crap diet. Yeah, no, and this happens rarely. The vast majority of people that lower their carbohydrate intake notice that their triglycerides come down substantially. Uh, there are several things that can make your triglycerides falsely high or temporarily high. I go, I cover this in several of my YouTube videos on this channel. Uh, it could be anything from drinking three cups of coffee the morning of your triglycerides. For some few people, that can raise them. Uh, you may be fasted not long enough before you had your lab work. Doctors sometimes will tell you you don't have to be fasting for triglycerides, but you absolutely do. Hope that answers your question. All right. Let's see what else we got. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There we go. It's fine. Okay. Just keep going. Okay. Yeah. Marnie. Marnie Mac. Stop. Keto carnivore for four years post hysterectomy 20 years ago. 60 year old now. Just started uh, PMS, PMS symptoms recently. What's up with that? So if you had a hysterectomy, that means they took out your uterus. But it's very common for doctors, at least some doctors, to leave your ovaries behind. And that's actually a good thing if they leave your ovaries behind. But it also means that even though you don't have your monthly uh, show, uh, then to know, oh, I'm on my period. I don't know how else to put that. What's a better word for that? Without cycle. Being, yeah. You're, well, you still have your cycle. It's just in the background now, Marty Mac. And so what you've done now is you went into menopause and you're no longer having those those hormones fluctuate normally like they would and now you're having the pms symptoms that's most likely what's up with that the show i'm going to start calling it the show i'm having my show thank you amy <laughs> that's actually kind of funny having my show oh your monthly show yeah. my monthly yeah. show is happening well, older doctors call it that so oh, really yeah anyway. rush man from december 30th to march 3rd a1c 5.2 triggs 199 down to 113 alt went from 64 to 45 also lost 15 pounds all from omad not even phd no sweets no alcohol little changes work now 30 pounds total yeah absolutely every little bit of improvement you make in your diet and your lifestyle it's going to add up to better health. I totally agree, Rush, man. Happy late Mother's Day to all you mamas out there. Tell Granny Berry happy Mother's Day in the comments if you want to. Yeah, Granny Berry's watching this. She's 93, not 94. 
She's watching this this evening. You can say happy Mother's Day, Granny Berry, and where you're watching from. She loves that. Mark Gibbs, I just cannot do the harder fat on steaks. Will the fat and butter and bacon offset eating the thick fat on steaks? Uh, fat in butter and fat in bacon are also animal fats. They are very, very healthy and good for you. Uh, I think that ruminant fat is slightly better. But if you just haven't yet been able to bring yourself to start to like it, then every now and then keep trying. Just cut off a little tiny sliver and try to eat it. Uh, but yeah, the fat from bacon and butter are just fine. Sophia, I have a colonoscopy next month. Thoughts on the new... Sutap pills, Sutap. are they safe? Yeah, they're, they're safe. They're basically uh, just a, an oral form of a colonic. They're going to clean you out real good. Uh, a lot of doctors who do colonoscopies don't like the pills as well as the old-fashioned way, but most patients like the pills much better than the old-fashioned way. Carnival Chris in the house. Carnival Chris, hey, how's Discount it going? Discount code Barry. Hey, Ashley. Well, hey, Mitzi, all how's our it going? Frequent flyers in the comment section. I know we've got so many group members in here. There's Paola. Hey, Paola. Hey, Briar Rose. There's Roxana. Roxana, now let me go back and just say something. This is, uh, where, right there, there she is right there. So, Roxana has shared this in three Facebook groups. And the reason that Roxana does this each and every week is because there are people out there right now suffering from type 2 diabetes, fatty liver, hypertension, obesity, and they have no idea that just a few simple tweaks to their diet and they can reverse all those things. And so Roxana does her best to get this word out to as many new people each week as she possibly can. You can do the same exact thing. You can be like Roxana by clicking that share button right down there. Uh, Di. Hey, Doc and Nisha, I was here a year ago, went away, gained a ton of weight back. Now I'm back. Tomorrow's my first day of carnivore. Wish me luck. Weighed in at 2.43 this a.m. All right. You can do it. Die. you can do this just one day at a time. One meal at a time. You That's all you it. have just to do. Just get back and do it. Joanna says, happy Mother's Day, Granny Berry. Hang on, let me get to the bottom and I'll turn it over to you, Madam. Shotgunette. I love it. Shotgunette. That's your kind of people right there. You take that one. <laughs> I did a 12-day fast in March, and my cycle went away. I'm now carnivore with green tea. Will the caffeine interfere with getting my cycle back? Probably not. Um, the You were probably under-eating, and that's what caused your cycle to go away. 12-day fast. Yeah, if you're, if you're eating until you're comfortably stuffed with carnivore, whether it's one meal a day, two meals a day, or even three meals a day, as long as you're eating to satiety, uh, that's the signal that it's safe and healthy for you to have a baby, which is why your body makes you have monthly cycles. Richard, is freshwater fish as healthy as seafood from the ocean? Probably. It's very, the, the protein is full of all the amino acids you need. Uh, most freshwater fish are a little on the, not quite as fatty as I would like them to be, si especially in Tennessee. Perch, blue grit, gill, crappie, bass. Uh, now, some of the northern fish are much fattier and they're, they're even better. Uh, but you, you're not getting the iodine and the other minerals that are found uh, in seawater fish. And so if you're going to eat just exclusively freshwater fish, then I would highly advise you to get some daily minerals right here behind Nisha's lovely cheek. And that way, you know, you're getting your iodine and your other minerals. It matters, though, about the farm raised versus yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. You want them to be wild caught if possible, yeah. but. Like catfish, catfish in the United States, it's going to be farmed, and they're going to be fed a crap diet. John, doing ketovore since mid-February, feeling better now, down 18 pounds, no labs yet, trying to wean off wine, yeah. trying to lower blood pressure. Thanks for all you do for us. You're getting there, Dawn. Keep it up. Gospel truth. Like that. mem late uh, February 26th. To 399 pounds, went veg, then added lean meat, then dirty keto, now 99% carnivore, very little dairy, uh, weigh 325 pounds today. So that's down, what, 70 something pounds. Triggs 175, they went down to 102. My A1C was 5.9, now down to 5.0. That's gorgeous. Liver enzymes, normal, but uric acid went from 5.5 to 8.0. 
point forward. Do I need to worry about this? No, you do not. Just because your uric acid is elevated does not mean you have gout. It does not mean anything necessarily negative whatsoever. There are many reasons that uric acid can be elevated temporarily. GBD guy, how much sugar will knock you out of ketosis? I like store-bought liverwurst, but it has one gram of sugar per serving. Yeah, if it's a large serving, that's probably not enough sugar to matter unless you're eating, you know, 10 servings. Uh, but that, there are many of the store-bought meats that might have, have been cured with sugar or have one gram of sugar per serving size. As long as the serving size is a generous portion, it makes sense that that's a serving size, then it's probably nothing to worry about. Uh, one more thing. Sorry. Can I do zip fizz on carnivore to get my electrolytes? Does zip fizz have sugar in it? I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, we prefer element uh, electrolyte powders. You can mix them with water. They've got 20 different flavors. You can make your own electrolyte mix, too. Mm, um, that's true. It's a little cheaper if you're on a budget. Suzanne. Hi, I usually have small veins, but blood drawn today after carnivore electrolytes and vitamin B12 is a possible building veins on carnivore. Yeah. One of the things that many carnivores notice uh, is that they become much more vascular. Their, their blood vessels become more prominent, not in a bad way or a gross way or a dangerous way. They, they just used to have tiny veins that were invisible. Now they have noticeable veins. This is a, this is a thing. Go ahead. Sorry. Heather, Dr. Berry, is it possible to eat a PhD and raise your magnesium, potassium, and vitamin D levels without taking supplements? Yeah, I actually have videos on this channel about high magnesium foods, high potassium foods, and high vitamin D foods. I'd prefer you didn't take a supplement. But some people, are when they see the vitamin D rich foods video, they're like, I don't really like any of those. And so they opt to just take a, a vitamin D supplement. Thank hey, you. thank you very much. Shugum. Strict carnivore for five months and uric acid has gone from 13.7 to 10.5. Tried adding seasoning, but I would get body and joint pain. What are your thoughts? So whatever that seasoning was, stop adding that because obviously your body doesn't like that. Your uric acid is coming down towards normal. So obviously no worries there. Keep doing what you're doing. Correction. 399 pounds down to 325. Down 74 pounds. So down 74 pounds, blood work numbers. Yeah, excellent gospel truth. Well done. Uh, whoever asked, Pedialyte is not a good source of oil. No, Pedialyte is terrible. It is junk. Ashley, hey. Hey, Ashley. My psychiatrist retires in a year and I support after that. Can I safely come off Lamictal and Valium with triple B and E on my own? No. You need to find somebody else, Ashley. Yes. Even if you have to drive an hour. You need to find a, a health care provider, a mental health care provider who can wean you down off these slowly. Yeah. But good for you. Yes. We're so proud of you. Yes, you're doing well. Sonia, eating keto for over a year, I was told not to supplement potassium unless prescribed by a doctor. What's that you? Well, I, I wouldn't take any unnecessary potassium unless prescribed by a doctor. But the potassium found in electrolyte supplements we talk about, that's not an inordinate amount. It's not a dangerous amount. Also, you can get potassium from foods. I have a potassium-rich food video on this channel. Sue. Thursday episode of SVT uh, for three hours. Finally converted just as RN was to give diltiazem. Uh, mag sulfate given for low magnesium. Why would this happen? Three hours. My bad. Not ER. Okay. Uh, so people have SVT sometimes. So uh, you, uh, a small heart attack can precipitate this. Uh, electrolyte abnormalities can precipitate it. It could have been the low magnesium that caused that. Could be any number of things that caused it. Uh, if the doctors in the ER didn't figure out what it was, then I probably can't do it over YouTube. Uh, but you need to make sure from this day forward that you've got a good sources of magnesium in your diet. Hey, he's got a good question. I don't eat vegetables. Do I need keto, chow, mineral drops? I think currently anybody who eats needs the mineral drops until we have regenerated the soil in all of the farm regions of every country of the world. Uh, in many of the soils have been over farmed and mismanaged to the point where either the minerals are not available there anymore, or they're locked up in the soil and the plants can't get them out. And so if the plant can't pull the magnesium or iodine or whatever out of the soil and put it into its leaves, and then the cow or the goat or the sheep eat it and get that magnesium iodine or whatever, then it's not going to be in the animal. It's not going to be in the plant. And out of an abundance of caution, that's why we developed the mineral drops. Right. 
you really should move those in the middle if you're going to point to them. Nelson, why is my heart pressure beating harder for a couple hours after my prime rub with butter and red and salt dinner when I'm sleeping? Yeah. Should I be concerned? Yeah, some people notice that their heart beats more, the heartbeat is more pronounced after they eat a big meat meal. Uh, this is not necessarily dangerous or bad in any way. If, you, if you're having any shortness of breath, pain or pressure, or you just are worried too much about it, go see your doctor and have them check, check it out. And eat a big steak with lots of Redmond's Real Salt right before you go. So it'll be pounding when you get there. They can do an EKG, see if everything's normal. 99% of the time, this is not a concern whatsoever. B-Dog, what's the latest info on lean mass hyperresponders? I believe I was one at 170, 10% body fat, and 300 cholesterol. Yeah, you sound like you might be. There's actually one research uh, study that's almost finished and another that's ongoing at the moment, just about lean mass hyper responders and my friend dave feldman has a website and if you just uh, do an internet search for dave feldman f-e-l-d-m-a-n you'll find his website and you can actually sign up for future research on lean mass hyper responders shannon how long for 50 plus does it take for the scale to start moving started over a week ago on carnivore scale hasn't moved over a week ago is not a very long time yeah so you started less than two weeks ago and you may or may not have any weight loss yet. Uh, it also depends on what type of carnivore you're mm -hmm. doing. Are you eating fruit and honey? Yeah, if you are, if you thought that fruit and honey was carnivore, stop that immediately. That's not carnivore. You need to eat just beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Okay. You can add uh, fatty seafood if you want to. That's totally fine. But you need to eat as close to zero carbohydrates as you can each and every day. Eat one or two meals a day to satiety. That means until you're comfortably stuffed and then go outside and play. And before long, the weight loss will start. If it hasn't started in another few weeks, then watch my video on the 13 reasons why your weight loss might stall. Raziel, will spices affect carnivore diet for weight loss? For the vast majority of people, spices, as long as they're zero sugar, zero carb, are totally fine on carnivore. Uh, some people with autoimmune conditions and immune systems that are touchy, they have to limit the spices or they'll have a reaction or a flare-up. But the vast majority of us, if we're just doing this to lose weight, you can use your spices. They're just fine. Most carnivores that cut out the spices aren't doing it because of weight loss. They're doing it because they're sensitive to the ingredients in the spices. Uh, some people have nightshade sensitivities, peppers, and those type of things. Yeah. Adam. Ketones, 15 millimolar from urine test one month into keto. Cause for concern. Thought it was untypically high. So urine test strips for ketones are notoriously unreliable and inaccurate. I don't recommend them. And so if you can afford it, please get a, a blood ketone meter that uses a, a little finger stick of blood. Uh, this could be lab error. This could be nothing at all to worry about. Julissa? Julissa. Gastric sleeve 10 years ago. Recent blood work showed ferritin level is 1, saturation 3, iron total 10. Doctor recommended infusions. Can carnivore raise iron? What meats are best? Yeah. So first of all, have your doctor investigate why these levels are so low. Are you losing blood from somewhere? Do you have anemia or not? If you do have anemia, what kind of anemia is it? So with that being said, and you planning to do that, Red meat and liver are the two meats that are going to raise your blood count the quickest, that are going to give you all the iron that you need, that is absolutely the, the highest bioavailable, bioabsorbable iron on the planet. Do not take an iron supplement. Now, if, if your doctor thinks that you're in an emergency situation, you may need to do an infusion, okay? But you need to absolutely find out why, why are these numbers so low? Satoshi? Hey, Satoshi. Dr. Barry, I'm six foot three, 180 pounds with fatty liver. I'm currently on keto, but worried about losing too much weight. Also, do not drink at all. Any advice? So my advice to you is one, don't keep not drinking. That's good. Number two, keto is not a weight loss diet. Okay. Keto is a weight optimization diet. It's going to move you to, towards your ideal body weight, Satoshi. It's going to reverse your fatty liver within three to nine months, tops your fatty liver will be completely gone, if not sooner. Uh, but it's not going to make you keep losing weight. That's not how a ketogenic way of eating works. Kane, will there be an audiobook version of your new kicking posterior after 50? Hang on, guys. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
Zane Griggs and I wrote this book together, Kicking Posterior After 50. And it's for men specifically after 50, but also all the principles apply for women as well. And we will be recording the Audible in the next month or two. We're going to do it in some studios in Nashville. And then that will be available as soon as we get it finished. But right now it's available as a paperback on Amazon. And you can get one today. And if you've already got one and read it, then please leave an honest review on Amazon so that uh, you can help others know whether they want to buy that or not. Do I need to say the title in my voice? Yeah. Yeah. Say it in your voice. No, I probably can't do it now. Kicking the ass after 50. <laughs> Why is that so funny? I don't know. Ashley. Ashley, are any docs? All docs are leaving my oh province. My I feel on my own. Mm. I uh, that has anything Ashley, to do with. I'm not sure what you Peterson. can do in a situation like that. You think maybe that's the Peterson effect? Well, I mean, I don't know what maybe. Providence she lives yeah. in. I just know he's having issues. Uh, Ashley, I don't know. You just can't give up. You got to keep looking because I know you yes. want to come off those two, but it's it's not safe to, to come off those two on your own without supervision. Dex wants to know if I have any liver recipes on my channel. I do have a liver pate, liver mousse recipe, and it is my favorite way to eat liver. So that is on my channel. Jim Godfrey, no gallbladder. Will ox bile help with constipation? Maybe. Most people notice that if they uh, increase their fat intake a little and make sure they're getting plenty of magnesium, either in their food or as a supplement, that that fixes any minor constipation problems that they might have. Uh, curly cues, my TSH that stands for thyroid stimulating hormone is 60.9. Should I be concerned? I was prescribed levothyroxine. Yes. So that's very, very high. That almost certainly means that you have some type of hypo or low thyroidism. Uh, you definitely need some thyroid hormone replacement. Levothyroxine is a fake T4. It's not real. So um, maybe ask your doctor if you could get armor or nature or um, one of the, the natural desiccated thyroid hormone replacement medications. But yeah, you got to get that down somewhere between 0.5 and 3.0 to feel your best and to be able to lose weight. Chai T, Chai -T. also known as TT. TT. <laughs> LDL 242, cholesterol 317, HDL 63, A1C 5.7, glucose 117. The doctor wants me to start on a stat. And what do you think? Well, I think you're pre-diabetic. Did your doctor not want to discuss what they were going to do about your A1C of 5.7 and your pre-diabetes? Because that's a much high, bigger, much larger risk factor for heart attack than having elevated LDL. That's shown in the literature time and time again. Having type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes is a huge risk factor. But your doctor wanted to talk about a statin. I think that if you get your A1C down to normal and you also get your triglycerides and your fasting insulin and your HDL all towards normal, the LDL is meaningless. That's what I think about that. TikTok. My dog has been carnivore for eight months but has diarrhea for several months now. Veterinarian is clueless. Any suggestions? I might try weaning down the, the veg and just try cooked carnivore for a while and then raw she said cooked. carnivore oh i thought oh i thought she said keto i don't know why i saw that i saw it with my mind <laughs> in my eyes uh so are you cooking it or is it raw you might want to add back in some veggies okay the dog? dogs yeah really? dogs okay. dogs are omnivores they can eat plants there's no doubt about that but they are what we call facultative carnivores which means they can tolerate but in your case your dog may need some cooked vegetables never raw always cooked with some bacon grease mixed in to make it taste good, that may help. Uh, if the vet can't find any solution, then maybe get a second opinion from another vet. Sky Ricky, I have Hades hernia? Hi, hiatal hernia, that's oh, what they meant, okay. yeah. And doctor says take uh, Pantaloc every day. Is that bad for you? Does it cause osteoporosis? Uh, did you mean Pantoprazole? Did you mean like Zantac or Pepsid or some of those? If you did, then yes, if you convert to a meat-heavy keto diet, a ketovore diet, or a carnivore diet, the vast majority of people, even though they have a hiatal hernia, their heartburn goes away, okay? Now, just taking a pill because you have a hiatal hernia is stupid, not on your part, but your doctor's part. Now, if you're having heartburn and reflux, then you may need a pill temporarily as you fix your diet. 
but yes, the, the acid blocker pills have been shown to, to be associated with an increased risk of dementia, osteoporosis, pneumonia, all kinds of other infections, a lot of bad things from taking a daily um, uh, Zantac or Pepsid, uh, Nexium, Protonics. You don't want to do that. <clears throat> Chloe, 33-year-old female, have had low levels of testosterone for three years. Doctors cannot give me any answers. All of my tests are quote-unquote normal. I've been going off on keto carnivore for six years now. So how do you know your testosterone levels are low if your doctor said your testosterone levels are normal? Is it, or I think she means her other tests. All her other tests are normal. Have had low Maybe. tests, low levels of tests. I think she means testosterone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you think you've got low testosterone, find a doctor that that specializes in bioidentical she hormone within range is what she replacement. Means. Because within range does not always mean normal, and it definitely doesn't always mean optimal. So find a doctor who specializes in that, and have them look at your labs and maybe check some more labs. Just keeps jumping, jumping, jumping. Adam, wife wants to know why it's not dangerous to eat lots of eggs since they have cholesterol. Mm. Wife is worried about me yeah. and being eating a carnivore, even though it's cured my non-alcoholic fatty liver yeah. disease. So Adam's wife, listen up now, this is important. The American Heart Association several years back, they said very clearly in their supplement that they put out once a year, I think it was 2015, that dietary cholesterol is not a nutrient of concern. They used to say only eat so many milligrams a day. And all doctors are worried about that. So basically what's happened now is you remember that echo of the lie from back, way back then, but they stopped saying that several years ago. They don't list any maximum intake of cholesterol anymore. They say it's not a nutrient of concern because we know from the research that eating cholesterol does not make you have high cholesterol. It doesn't work that way. It's way more complicated than that. So let Adam eat a carnivore diet because having alcoholic, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is a thousand times more dangerous than him eating lots of cholesterol. Eating cholesterol is not bad for human beings. It's good for us. CB Genesis, how to counteract carbs to minimize weight gain. So the way you counteract carbs to, so you want to minimize weight gain. So you don't want to, had a minute. Okay, so the way you minimize carbs to minimize <laughs> don't eat the carbs. Don't eat if carbs. You don't gain weight. <laughs> if you want to gain fat, eat more carbs. If you want to lose fat, then eat very few carbs or no carbs. That's the way you do that. Is that? I hope that answers your question. Uh, yeah. Either my answer was obtuse or, mm. or your question was. I'm not sure. Carlos. Carlos. Is acne a sign of something wrong in the gut? Also, how's pooping in the early stage of carnivore? I poop every other day, very little, and had to push to be able to poop. Yeah, it's very common for carnivores to poop, have one small poop a day or one every other day or one, even one every third or fourth day because what you're eating is pure nutrition. You absorb it all. You know, you're not eating a bunch of waste and fiber that you've got to poop out. Uh, if you had to strain to be able to poop it out, then you need to up your fat and take a little also, bit. Also, he said he's in the early stage of the uh, carnivore. Right. So sometimes in that transition yep. period, you can have bouts of diarrhea or constipation as your body kind of regulates to that change. I've got a video about acne, two or three actually on this channel. Acne is almost 100% caused by hyperinsulinemia chronic inappropriate inflammation and and then too much sugar in the diet feeding the skin bacteria and causing them to grow and multiply inappropriately uh, that's the vast majority of the cause of acne once you start eating a very low carb diet lower the inflammation and calm down the hormones the acne gets better if not goes completely away marshall wants to know what the best type of magnesium is for muscle spasms what do you think <laughs> somebody already quoted me but Listen, this, I'm tired of having the point back here. These have magnesium and a bunch of minerals. So it's not always just magnesium when you have muscle spasms. A lot of times it's because you're lacking other things as well. I've taken magnesium for muscle spasms and I've taken this. And although this tastes awful, it works better than any magnesium supplement or drop that I've ever taken. So to 
keep yourself from having muscle spasms. Take a dose of, of this, but don't do it all at once because like I said, it tastes really bad. You can put a little bit in each of your beverages throughout the day. And I'm telling you. You can cook with it. If, just It's not because his face is on here. That makes it, it actually, makes it it actually look better, though, really, it? It, it really is <laughs> yeah. the best thing for muscle spasms in my experience. And a lot of you have said the same thing. A few months back, she came up out of bed like a shot and took off into the kitchen. And I'm like, is there an intruder? What's going on here? I, I didn't know if she was going to meet her boyfriend or what was happening. So I got up and ran after her and she's in the cabinet with this bottle. And she's like, and nails a shot of it and then makes the most horrid face imaginable. Chase it if you're going to do that. Yeah, chase quickly. it. And, but then her muscle cramp was gone. Yeah, so, so I, when I first had Bonnie and Beckett both times because I had long labors with both of them, I was very dehydrated and I breastfeed too. So if I don't drink enough water with minerals and electrolytes, then I get muscle spasms. But if I keep that up, then I don't have any problems. Yeah. GBD guy. Oh, wait, you missed one. Yeah, that one right there. Ezra. Yep. Okay. Nah. Okay. <laughs> Ezra, BUMs 23, creatinine 1.3, EGFR 79. Should I worry about the creatinine? The reference range stopped at 1.24. Yeah, it's it's slightly high. You ha currently have stage one chronic kidney disease. That's how most doctors would um, put you. That would be the category they'd put you in. I want you to eat a strict ketovore or carnivore diet for the next 90 days and then go back and have this rechecked. And I predict that you'll be very happy with the outcome. Uh, now, GBD guy, talk about methionine to glycine ratio on carnivore. Is it maintained only by eating beef? You know, I was just talking with a lion and a tiger the other day, and they were having this huge debate about methionine and glycine and how whether they should eat more antelope or an antelope water buffalo ratio. Oh, no, wait. I'm, I'm just completely full of shit. They just eat meat until they're full and get about their business. And that's what you should do to GBD guy. Oh, Don't worry about these, these foolish arguments where people try to mine, mine, major in the minors. That's all this is. Stop worrying about minutia. Just eat your meat and eggs with the yolk. Carnivorous me is in the house. Hey. Sorry, everybody saying hi to her. Uh, Dr. Berry just interviewed I just her. interviewed Carnivorous me. Her story is earth shattering. It is also uh, heartwarming. I'm going to post it tomorrow on this channel. If you want to see the inspirational story of I think the decade, then watch my YouTube channel tomorrow. When I post that video, check that, that, that interview out. It's, While you're waiting for that, you can just go watch a man's channel. Carnivorous, right. me, Carnivorous me and yeah. uh, support her and subscribe over there. She is putting out some amazing content. Karambit. How do I find a local primary care doctor who will be supportive of my carnivore journey? Well, the first thing you can do is watch my video called how to find a low carb keto doctor near you and look in the show notes and there's six or seven websites. You put your zip code in and it tells you the nearest low carb friendly doctor near you. That's number one. Number two, call your local pharmacist that's owned by an actual human, not a corporation and ask them, are there any low carb friendly doctors in the area? Next, you can just find a young doctor who's been in practice just a few years and go see them. They're often much more trainable and much more willing to work with someone who's rationally wanting to discuss their health and which diet they should eat. Sometimes the old gray hair doctors are set in their ways and not willing to learn new things. That'd be my three tips. Allison, strict carnivore for four months. Labs are great, down 16 pounds. Blood pressure, great. CAC score, great. A1C down, or is 5.4 to 5.5. Yeah. Wondering why. That's fine. No, no reason. That's totally normal and fine. Uh, A1C is going to fluctuate a little. You may have had an, an, uh, allergies for a few weeks the th in the last three months, because that's an average of three months, right? You may have had some stress. You may have had some whatever. It may just be lab error. All these lab tests are going to be have a, a, a uh, range of plus or minus 10%. So 5.5 is beautiful. Huzzah. High five through the screen. <laughs> Raja, ketovore, carnivore, what's the difference? Which is better? Which do I do? Yeah. So if you like to have a little bit of plants, a few veg in your diet, then ketovore. If you're like, dude, I could eat meat and eggs forever and never touch a plant again, carnivore is your answer. 
Uh, ketovore typically is under 10 total grams of carbs a day, whereas keto is under 20 total grams of carbs a day. Uh, so usually ketovore, since this is the mother of ketovore, I'm just going to shut up and let her talk. Ketovore is basically your carnivore most of the time. And then every, you have vegetables in a very limited amount, under 10 grams total carbs per day serving size, and the vegetables that you can tolerate that you're not sensitive to. And you have, it's, we call them, or I call them, those are flex days. So most days you are carnivore with the exception, you might use some spices and sauces that are clean, good ingredients. And then maybe two days a week, you throw some onions on your steak or you have some mushrooms on your steak, or you have some sort of, you know, side topping type of vegetable, not a full serving, like you don't have a big thing of broccoli or a big salad. And if you do, it's a very rare occasional yeah. thing. And we do know that mushrooms are not a vegetable before you say that. Well, uh, they're not a meat. That's a right. Meat. I know. But I'm just, somebody's going to say that in the comments. Leanne says testosterone is mainly cholesterol. And Leanne is correct. Back to our cholesterol answer earlier. Did you know that all of your hormones, all of your sex hormones are made from cholesterol? Testosterone is made from cholesterol. So if your testosterone is low, maybe you should eat more cholesterol. That might help a little bit. By the way, if you want to know more about keto board, you can come to my channel mm -hmm. where I show what I eat in a day vlogs and much more. I have a bunch of keto board dedicated educational videos over on my channel. Just search her name and it's spelled -E -I -S -H -A. correctly. N-E-I-S-H-A. Nisha. Yeah. Good job. It's in the title of this video. <laughs> Thank you, Angel. Heather. I didn't realize it fits so well. Heather. Going 100% carnivore. I'm a type 2 diabetic with an A1C of 9.2. Oh, my God. Yes, you need to go carnivore starting the very next meal that you eat, Heather. Uh, low T3, losing hair uh, on T150 from naturopathic. Yeah, I don't, I've don't. i got thoughts on that. Hysterectomy five years ago with hardly any progesterone, testosterone, but I still have my ovaries. Did she say how old she is? No. Ho hoping carnivore can help me help myself 100%. It's going to reverse your type 2 diabetes within three just three to nine months. Your type 2 diabetes will be completely gone. Make sure you get a full thyroid panel so they check all your thyroid hormones and realize that many naturopathic doctors, although well-meaning, would love to sell you lots of supplements that they just happen to have there on hand because that's part of their profit model. Uh, what I would tell you Heather, and everybody else who sees a naturopathic doctor, they're, they're very honorable and ethical. But tell them right up front, look, if you think I need any supplements, then write them down for me. I'm not going to buy them from you directly. I'll buy them from somewhere else, okay? Because I want to keep my pa relationship with you doctor-patient only. I don't want you to become a store where I buy things. I feel like that muddies the relationship. So you feel free to tell me what supplements I need, but I'm not going to buy them from you. And most naturopath doctors will not like that. But if you are adamant about that, I think they'll say, well, you can buy them from so-and-so online. Do you hear that? What is that? I think the cat's on the roof. I think the cat's on the roof. <laughs> they are my next 50 years. Now on week three of carnivore fasting labs done week before starting. When should I redo my labs and what changes will I see? Yep. So I you so is glucose is one hundred nine. A one C is five point six, which is normal. Ferritin one seventy seven. Vitamin D. Oh, triglycerides three sixty five. Oh yeah. So Ooh. your trigs are going to come down. So I would get your labs rechecked in about three months, uh, if you can. Six months if you have to wait that long. That's fine too. But you're going to notice your triglycerides are going to cut in half at least in that three months of of carnivore. Brock Nelson, Niagara Falls stool on high fat line diet, dry oh, skin, uh, too low fat, ground beef primarily, and I have to wipe five times and have incomplete stool evacuation. So I think maybe you need to do a middle ground here, mm -hmm. it sounds yep. like. So let's try making the fat to protein ratio one to one. In grams. Mm -hmm. In grams, not in, in micros. And let's try that for a couple of weeks. And then also add in some liver because it sounds like you may be low in uh, vitamin a or vitamin e thus the dry skin also you can add in some seafood some wild caught small fish like sardines and that's going to help you get the omega-3 fatty acid which would be the other reason that your skin is dry 
Okay, and if your bowel problems persist after those corrections, go see your doctor because bowel symptoms are not always from your diet. Patty, Dr. Berry, I know you do your research and happy that you do. Do you know if there's any relationship between low zinc in men and prostate problems? Thank you. Possibly, because we know that low zinc can affect testosterone production and, and it can have uh, kind of trickle down effects to all other aspects of male anatomy and male sexual function of which the prostate is intimately related. So yeah, uh, make sure I've got a video on this channel called Zinc Rich Foods and he can eat from those or he can take a zinc supplement. The Valt Carnivore. Valt Carnivore. My LDL is 297, HDL 42, Triggs are 70. Could I be a lean mass hyper responder with an HDL of only 42? I'm on TRT, which I'm told could bring HDL down. For some people that, that does happen a little bit. Doc won't get off my back about LDL. So ultimately your decision, it's your decision whether to take a low dose of a statin or not. Some people compromise with their doctor and they'll take five milligrams of Crestor just to shut their doctor up. Do not take Lipitor or Zocor. Both of those cross the blood brain barrier and can get into your brain. Crestor doesn't look like it crosses the blood brain barrier. Uh, but then many, many other patients are happy to tell their doctor, no, I'm never taking that. You can keep talking about it. And we can keep wasting time or we can move on or I can bring you some research to educate you, doctor. Uh, have you thanked our mentors tonight, our moderators? Our moderators are, they work so hard and they help so many people. If, if you see someone with a little blue wrench beside their name, that means they're a, a YouTube moderator and they're also our mentors and they help thousands of people inside of our private group when they're just getting started with the simple questions, the beginner questions. And so thank you very much to our moderators. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to join the group, you have to go here. If you don't want to join the group, you just stay right where you are. But we do a lot of uh, extra things in the group, like the interview with Amanda Carnivorous Me was Q and A for live. people live for the people inside the group. It'll be on replay for YouTube, but different things like that. You can check out the website and see what all we're doing over there. Steven, I've been zero carb carnivore for about two weeks now. Is there any issue with doing alternate day eating? Nope. Forty eight hour fast between meals. This is this early in carnivore. No, there's no issues with that. I wouldn't recommend it unless you've got a very high body fat percentage, you're obese. In other words, you got lots of fat you want to burn off rather quickly, in which case you could absolutely do this, keeping in mind that every time you do eat a carnivore meal, you're going to eat until satiety, meaning that you're comfortably stuffed. You can't eat another bite. Guy Ricky, swollen red hot pointer finger, arthritis and joint applying ice, not helping Dr. Said. Diclofenac and having cataract surgery and I have glaucoma. So applying ice to a, a painful joint is never going to help it. That's actually going to slow down the healing process. You want to put heat on the joint. Uh, diclofenac is an anti-inflammatory. It has a long list of side effects. Taking it for two or three days for this finger is perfectly safe and fine as long as you follow the instructions from the pharmacy very closely. Uh, but you don't want to take di diclofenac long term. Uh, if you're having cataract surgery and you have glaucoma, then you definitely need to follow up with your eye doctor. Martin, thoughts on mushrooms on the carnivore yeah. diet? So I don't think mushrooms are a huge deal. They do have some, uh, they do have some carbohydrates, but mushrooms don't have the phytochemicals that many of the plants have. They don't have their own special fungal. They have fungo chemicals. So there's no phytochemicals in a mushroom. So some people that'll trigger and some at one. Uh, I, I have a few mushrooms occasionally. We went to, what was the restaurant we went to? 1230? Yeah, 1230 Club in Nashville. And I had an excellent bone-in ribeye and I had some sauteed mushrooms, sauteed in butter. Do you eat some of my mushrooms? I don't love fungus as a food, but those I did actually, they were very, very good. Yeah. I think the main thing here is carnivore is you're eating m meat 99.99% of the time. And maybe you have a pickle yeah, or a few mushrooms like yeah. a few times a year. Yeah. Where ketovore is you're having something besides meat a few times a week. And that's the main thing that differentiates. Now, there are carnivores who do not ever touch a vegetable or a, fungus. Or a fruit. That's right. Or any of that. Um, so, you know, there's all kinds of kinds of this. Point. All kinds of ways. Angel. Help fatty liver and colon inflammation here. Okay. So I've got 
five videos, I think, on this channel, Angel, about how to reverse and get rid of fatty liver disease. And everything I talk about in those videos is also going to help your colon inflammation as well. I've got a video on this channel about irritable bowel, Crohn's disease. Everything I say in those videos will help with your colon inflammation as well. David. Had CAC scan at 30 years of age with a score of zero. Now at 37, should I get another one? Uh, I've been on and off keto for the last six years, six foot two, 195 pounds. So first of all, a lot of people don't realize this. At the age of 30, everyone should have a CAC score of zero. OK, that's 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 how the test is designed. So it, I'm glad you had a zero, but you should have had a zero. OK, uh, at 37. Yeah. If you want to get it done again, it costs about 100 bucks. There's very little radiation involved. Get it checked again. Uh, and then that way you can compare the two numbers. I don't it's, think it's mandatory. Mr. Sorry. Vegas says that the link in the show notes doesn't work, that you put a bad link in there, oh, and it's been that way for weeks. Mr. Vegas, why did you not tell me sooner? I think that he probably did. Oh, I'll fix it immediately. Thank you, Vicky. One crafty gal. Thank you, crafty gal. <laughs> Lemon, please. Can, Can we? we no. Uh, can we send labs to your office for a second opinion? No, you can become a member of our group and you can post your labs. And then everybody in the group, including the mentors, can will discuss and tell you, hey, mine used to look like that. Now they look like this. Uh, lots of people in our private group love to discuss lab work. It is not a medical consultation. It's not medical advice. That's right. It is not anything that you can take and do, like he is simply doing what we do right here on YouTube. That's right. I think people maybe. Yeah, it's not concerns. medical advice inside the group either. It's just more access to people who understand this way of eating and how it affects your labs. Adam. Oh, thank you, Adam, very much. It's my pleasure. Oh, There's one crafty one gal. There she is. Have you heard of a Zyto scan and do you think they really work? I had an acupuncturist do one and it showed my thyroid was inflamed. Well, I'm going to go with not what, what would you call that? What do you like to call those things? Pseudoscience? Dave Ramsey, <laughs> who I've listened to for years, he calls the cost of getting this Zyto scan done a stupid tax. And it's not not derogatory. It just means you learn as you learn as you go through life and you learn that acupuncturists are not going to be able to do scans that give you information about your thyroid. No, it sounds no. really cool. Yeah, sounds awesome. But no, you 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 paid stupid tax and learned a lesson. That's OK. That's OK. You move on. Mm -hmm. Carlos, my doc said I could have anemia due to low hemoglobin. Well, if your hemoglobin is low, then you you are anemic. How can I ing increase hemoglobin in my blood? He also said I could have fatty liver. Now I have to do a liver ultrasound. Yes, yeah, so get your liver ult ultrasound because you want to know for a fact, yay or nay, do you have fatty liver? Uh, if you do, then I've got videos on this channel that will help you reverse it. If you're anemic, the first thing your doctor needs to figure out is why. Are you bleeding from your rectum? Are you bleeding through your bladder? Is your, is your bone marrow just not making enough bone cells? Is your spleen chewing up the blood cells? Where's the blood going? Why am I anemic? Number one. Number two, eating plenty of fatty red meat and liver once or twice a week will help you reverse the anemia. Pop up here, make sure we get JR. Oh. Now on week three of Carnivore Fasting Labs, done. Oh, wait, did we do that already? We did get him. Yeah, we okay. got JR. Just making yeah. sure. Shadow of the day. I eat whole white mushrooms, not every two days, but every day. Only 16 ounces of them, about six carbs total. Other than that, just carnivore, still good. So you're eating a ketovore diet. You're eating six total grams of carbs a day. And I, I think that's probably perfectly fine. Uh, some mushrooms have a little bit of vitamin D. It depends on how they were raised. Some don't. Uh, there are some other nutrients in mushrooms. So if, if you're eating six total grams of carbs a day of mushrooms and everything else carnivore, that's ketovore. I think it's fine. Ashley says, please do your benzo video. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Phyllis, thank you for thank this. Thank you, Phyllis. Adam, is MSG okay source of sodium, or is it better to avoid it? So you should not use MSG as a source of sodium. You should get sodium from real salt, like Redmond's Real Salt. That's mined from deep underground. It comes from an ancient 
ocean that's now extinct, that's deep underground. That's the most pristine salt you can get. Uh, MSG is a, is a flavor enhancer. It should not be a, the source of your sodium. I would minimize MSG intake. Bazoo. Bazo, bazoo. Eczema flare up six months ago. Nothing since. Last week again on the same spot. Left upper leg. Seems like blood cloth in this area. Did you mean blood clot? Maybe due to too much sitting at home office. Just move more. So if you think you have a blood clot in your leg, Bazoo, you need to go see your doctor immediately because that can be a life-threatening condition. If that clot or part of that clot breaks loose and travels to your lungs, it can cause a pulmonary embolism that can either kill you or make you feel like you're dying. Tina, if you will copy paste your question again, uh, I think Mitzi is going to try to get you. Our moderators will look for it. Heather. I'm 47, interested in keto chow and wondering since I have had a hysterectomy, is it possible to get too much iron and iodine on carnivore? You two are amazing. Thank you and just joined your community. Oh, thank you, Heather. We'll so you first of all, if you were to get too much iodine in your diet, your body has this very complicated machinery called kidneys. And you just pee it out. That's what happens if you get too much iodine. It doesn't cause you to have hyperthyroid or thyroid cancer. You'll hear that sometimes. That's foolishness. You pee it out if you eat too much, okay? Same goes for iron. You're going to poop or pee it out if you if you eat too much. The truth. Thanks for all your great info. No more sugar. Already lost 15 pounds with no sugar. That should mean no oxidized LDL. How long does it take for the old oxidized LDL to be removed? Just Thanks. a few days. Uh, LDL has a very short lifespan. My doctor has myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome. Are you aware of any info about that condition and being carnivore? Yeah, you're going to reap hundreds of health benefits by being a carnivore, even if you suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome. Many people with chronic fatigue syndrome notice that their symptoms get much less severe on a carnivore diet. Hey, 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 there he is, Sean. If you would like to open the offer up to your group, have them email me and tell their story. Uh, for the five person giveaway for a spot in your private group. So uh, Sean on his channel, he puts up an email address and it, he's going to pick five people whose story is compelling about why they need to do a proper human diet. And he's going to pay for them to have a year long subscription, five people, I think, in the PhD health community. And so uh, just go to intentional carnivore. That's his handle on his YouTube channel. And in the video, uh, the, his videos, he talks about this offer and he'll be happy to do that. You just email him why you mm -hmm. should be included in that. Tina asked about B2 deficiency and cracks on the corners of her mouth. Could they be connected? So a B vitamin deficiency can lead to cracking and irritation of the mouth. Uh, also, several other vitamins and mineral deficiencies can lead to that. So the best thing is to eat a, a, a diet that's rich in all the vitamins and minerals. And then if you're worried about not getting enough minerals, then you add something like the daily mineral drops. Uh, and that that's going to make it go away. Now, if it continues, even after you say, okay, I've adopted a, a, a meat-heavy ketogenic diet and I'm eating liver twice a week and I'm eating lots of egg yolks and you still have that, then go see a dermatologist because it could be caused by something else. Just believe. Just getting started on the proper human diet. I'm pre-diabetic due to my weight. Now you're pre-diabetic because you ate too many carbohydrates too often for too long. That's also why, why you weigh 245. Glucose is 90 to 120, rarely ever over that. Will this help me? Give me more energy. So it's going to, a, a, a proper human diet is going to reverse your pre-diabetes within three to six months. It'll be gone. You'll have a normal A1C. Also, you're going to lose some excess stored fat, and that's going to bring your weight down. Uh, many people's blood sugar, look, every time they check it, it looks fine. But when you check that A1C and it's high, then you know you're having blood sugar excursions, even though you're not catching them. Ray Cab 1. <clears throat> what are your your head? <laughs> what are your thoughts on avocados? I get that they aren't carnivore, but just looking for your general thoughts on them if you are on just a low carb diet. Yeah. So keep in mind that avocados, they do have some good healthy fat in them, but they also have carbohydrates. And often when you look up how many carbohydrates does an avocado have, it'll say, Oh, okay, that many. But you bought one of those okay, yeah, jumbo steroid avocados. That's going to have two or three times as many carbohydrates. And a lot of people come to keto thinking that because, you know, they saw the T-shirt of bacon holding hands with the avocado. 
they're like, oh, okay, so avocados, I guess, uh, like a, a, a no point food, like on Weight Watchers, and I'm going to eat 10 avocados a day. You got to count the carbohydrates and everything you eat and keep it under 20 total grams a day for keto, under 10 grams a day for ketovore, and it's close to zero grams for carnivore. For so, the most part, avocados are not the things causing people that's issues. Exactly right. It's yeah. what people are putting avocado on. Yeah, that or putting the on issues. their avocado. You can do it either way. Okay, uh, but yeah, make sure you're conscious of the carb count in your avocado. They come in lots of different sizes. Yeah, your sure. body doesn't count calories, but it does count carbs. Vincent Sancho, are there dangers to long-term keto? No, there's not any research showing any long-term negative effects to a ketogenic diet whatsoever. One, increase in 4 H N E. Two, uh, so for H and E, you're trying to major in the minor. Stop worrying about minutia. Just eat lots of natural, health, healthy food. Uh, I wasn't finished with that question. I'm sorry. Okay. Leptin resistance. Again, you're majoring in the minor. Stop worrying about minutia. There's nothing you can do about leptin resistance except fix your diet. Thyroid problems. No documented research showing any thyroid problems from a ketogenic diet whatsoever. Fat burning slows down. I've never heard of this ever. Number five, anything else? No. Thank you, Vincent, for your question. All right. Lynn Sixley. Hi there. I'm a night shift ER nurse. I work three nights a week, uh, 10, uh, then flip back to normal sleep, sleep for the other four for my family. I usually fast 18 six. When should my eating window be? Thank you. So your eating window doesn't have to be the same window of time each and every day. You can adjust your eating window to, to coincide with the nights that you work versus the nights that you're off. You done with that? I'm done with that. Matt. Matt, I have psoriasis and the doctor has me on Otesia. I started carnivore three weeks ago and started having uh, started taking 50,000 units of vitamin D3 per day. Any suggestions? Thanks from Australia. So if you're taking 50,000 units a day of D3, only do that for a couple of weeks. And then you're going to switch over to five or 10,000 units. You don't want to keep taking 50,000 long term. Uh, the Otesia is probably going to become completely unnecessary once you've been on carnivore long enough. Most people with psoriasis, even severe body covering psoriasis, after a few months on carnivore, they typically have one small patch on an arm the size of a dollar or one small patch on their leg the size of a quarter. And they're very happy to put some hydrocortisone cream on that and not take mm -hmm. the expensive uh, medications with lots of side effects. Thank you, Han. Alonzo, I have low ALP of 38. Should I be worried? Most likely not. There's many things that can cause you to have a low ALP. Uh, and the vast majority of them are no concern whatsoever. Make sure and run it past your doctor and see what they say. Uh, die again. What are your thoughts on organ powders on your steak instead of eating the actual organ? So I think that organ powders are a distant second place to actually learning to eat the organ meat properly cooked, which can be delicious. If you'll go to Nisha's channel and find her chicken nugget recipe, Okay, that's number one. Number two, go buy some chicken livers. Cut those chicken livers up in small bite sizes and then use her chicken nugget recipe, the breading, to bread the chicken liver and then fry it in bacon grease and then get back to me because you're going to love that. It's going to taste amazing. Or you can have liver mousse or liver pate. Mm -hmm. Very, very tasty. Uh, JC says, is there any link with carnivore and arthritis? Well, there, the only link I know of, JC, is that there's tens of thousands of people who used to have severe daily disabling arthritis. And once they adopted a carnivore diet, their arthritis got so much better that they don't even hardly notice it anymore. Good question. Joanna says, I do can't do liver, so I take the supplements, but I do love chicken liver. That's the liver, That's baby. Liver. That's liver. Eat it doesn't have liver. to, you don't have to eat a big old fat beef liver raw like that idiot used to do. Chicken liver is liver. Cod <laughs> liver is liver. Duck liver is liver. Liver is liver. All of them are a superfood. Whichever one you like, you can eat it. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Uh, She's so relieved right now. She's like, thank oh. God in heaven above. I don't have to eat beef liver. Oh. 
You can eat lizard liver. Snake liver. Do snakes have a liver? Yes, they do. Yeah, you can eat snake liver. Jerry and Christy Little, wife, 53-year-old RN, strict keto, less than 10 uh, grams of carbs per day for six and a half months. I do feel better, but uh, almost no fat loss or energy improvement. Why? What can I change? Should I try strict carnivore? I would say for you, I hope that you've already had all of your female hormones checked and your thyroid hormones checked. That would be the first thing. Yep. Let's assume you've already done that. I would do 90 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs as an elimination diet. Perhaps there's something you're still eating that is causing you inflammation that you're that would otherwise be considered healthy yep. <clears throat> or keto for. Um, and you will be surprised at the results that you will get, not only in how you feel, but also just the information and the feedback that you get from your body once you reintroduce foods back. Yep, absolutely. And I have a video on this channel called The 13 Reasons Why Your Weight Loss Might Stall. Watch that video and investigate all 13 of those reasons with your doctor's help. But Nisha's right. The, the, the undiagnosed low thyroid is by far the most common reason. Y'all. You made it to the end. One whole hour of our shenanigans. If you like our shenanigans, come on back next Monday because we'll yeah. do it all over again. If, if you if haven't you already like, su subscribed, click that button right now. Well, hopefully. It's I mean, great. you know, really come on. Not done that? Come on. If you really love our shenanigans, then you can go to this website right here and sign up for our group where we do lots of fun activities. We do challenges sometimes, uh, exclusive content behind the scenes. Footage. I talk way more about the kids, what we feed the kids in there because YouTube is a weird yep. place. And we so. even <laughs> talk about things that you're not allowed to talk about on YouTube yeah. in the private. We group. get a little bit more deep into uh, things that yes. are strike controversial, controversial things. Yeah. Triggering. So, uh, but like I said, if you don't want to do that, no problem. We're always going to be on YouTube until they kick us off. So we're going to be live again tomorrow night at 6 p.m. in the group. Or we'll see you next Monday night at 7 p.m. Don't forget to go subscribe to my channel. You're going to have to look for it because Dr. Barry put a bad link in the comments. I'll fix it, I promise. Just type in my name. N-E-I-S-H-A. Nisha. Good job. See, see you, you later. later. <laughs>